Hi, I'm Cindy Jablonski. I'm the wildlife ecologist at McHenry County Conservation District. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about freshwater mussels today. So currently the county has 21 different species of freshwater mussels. Nine of them are considered state endangered, state threatened, or species of concern. Freshwater mussels are living filters. They filter our water, they filter the algae, the bacteria, the detritus, they clean the water for us. They are probably the best indicator of water quality that we have in our streams. They can withstand small disturbances, but um, continued disturbance, they will, they will just perish. They spend their entire life in pretty much one location in the stream. They aren't very fast, they don't move very far, so where, they're, where they land when they're juveniles is where they stay. And if that, those water conditions are good, they'll grow to be maybe 15, possibly 20 years old. But our streams are, have been greatly impacted. Channelization, damming, uh, the chemicals for residential and farm use, herbicides, fertilizers, they all have a huge impact on our streams and the stream fauna. It's no coincidence that district sites surround sections of stream, that they purposely pick sites that are going to protect and buffer our streams. Mussels have a really complicated and fascinating life cycle. The male releases sperm into the water. Hopefully it reaches the female. She takes it in, fertilizes the eggs. The eggs become larvae, which are called glochidia. She will hold those glochidia for weeks, maybe months, depending on the species of mussels. Some mussels have a fleshy, I'm going to call it a lure, that they extend past their mussel, and it looks like a little fish. And a uh, uh, host fish will come by and nibble at that lure, that fleshy lure, thinking it is a little fish, and she will release all her glochidia, and hopefully some of those will get into the gills of the fish. The larvae do not hurt the fish, but they will hang on there and feed off the nutrients from the fish for about a week, and then they will drop off into the substrate. So this is how, this is the interesting way that mussels have of dispersing into other waterways, other parts of the stream. Um, our mussels, some of the common names are kind of fun. Uh, mussels can range in size. You can actually count the rings on it and see about how old it is. This one's about nine years old. And this giant floater is only three years old. So quite a difference. This is as big as this, this um, pimpleback's going to get. We do a lot of biological surveys, both plant and uh, fauna surveys, to see what's on our sites, how they're using our sites, and maybe how we can improve that for more wildlife. When we do biological surveys, we have a standard protocol. We do the same thing over and over again so that we can monitor trends. This isn't just for mussels, this is for any kind of wildlife. So you want to compare, be able to compare surveys that are comparable um, in time and protocol and how they're done. When we do a mussel survey, we actually crawl in the stream, get completely wet, um, it's called a, we do a 10 man hour uh, crawls, the type of protocol that we use for mussel surveying. It's basically, so if you have 10 people, you'd survey for an hour. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of help here that want to get in the stream on a hot August day to survey for mussels. So we do usually do it for about an hour and get a pretty good representation of what's in that stream. When we're doing the survey, we collect them and put them in a bag, so just so we can ID them and enumerate them and put and record the species. And then we always release them back to exactly where we got them. We want to uh, make sure that they are happy where they're going. We need to cherish our streams. They're a valuable resource. Uh, we all want clean water. We all want good wildlife. We all want wonderful areas to hang out in. So cherish our streams. Thank you.